Hi, my name is Stuart. I'm from Malta, a small island in the Mediterranean, half a million population, south of Italy. Today I decided to um, show myself, say a few words, to just explain in brief what these videos are all about. I'm an amateur newbie, just been in this hobby for the past three years now. Started with the normal video reviews of SB Brown, Bigfoot, and have it back then, it's met, you know, and the others that are on lately. Um, because there is no pen community that I'm aware of in Malta, so I just got into this hobby some three years ago with a, an old friend of mine who used to live overseas and told me, sure, it is an architect, it's my profession, so we should start using fountain pens, you know, fountain pens. and it was out from there. So I would stay, spend nights watching reviews, learning, trying to learn, understand this universe, you know, it's big. And I started with my lung safaris, you know, with the Smongin house, and platinum sailors, Viscontis, you name it, you know, we've all been there. And what was first a five dollar pen became a ten dollar pen, etc. But I had no opportunity to try pens before I bought them. Locally, there are like Mont Blanc retailers, and I, I reckon Monte Grappa and some cross retailers, but other than that, none exists. So I would have to watch reviews, understand, and once I bought the pen, I would have bought it. So lately, I became interested in celluloids, which are a bit more intricate, you know, um, the very so mass. And then ASC, understanding what happened, what's not, you know, and the other Italian brands. And sometimes I would research a pen, but would not find the actual review of that pen on the YouTube. So what I'm just trying to do is that when I acquire something that I think might be of interest to others, I just make a small feature on it, a small video, trying to be factual as much as I can, having researched the background of the pen, be it like a modern pen or a more vintage pen and share it with you others on the web who like me would be looking for that particular pen. Other than that, I'm not trying to teach or because I am no expert reviewer. I'm learning, learning, learning and every time I learn something new, what I'm trying to do is share my passion with you other guys and girls out there enjoy and hope you appreciate or find something useful so here we find the booklet presented with the omas galileo galilei in the edition of 1993 the outer box was shown previously in the initial part of the video. In this booklet, Omas states that this pen was a commemoration of the 650th anniversary of the University of Pisa, which was between 1343 and 1993. Galileo Galilei was born and was a student in Pisa, University of Pisa, and he was born in 1564, we'll get back to this later. In this brochure, also Galileo Galilei brochure, Omas nearly makes a proclamation of its products, of the initial production of celluloids in the pre-Second World War period until the late 1930s, explain the difficulty and meticulousity of the production of this product due also to the insistence of Armando Simoni, Let's remember Omas is um, official mechanica Armando Simoni, the founder of the company. Then after World War II, also for market requirements, the celluloid was left aside and they recommenced production in 1991.
There's a whole description in Italian of what happened. They go into further detail explaining why the number is 4692, because if you multiply the year of birth of Galileo Galilei, which was 1564 by 3, you'll get the number 4692. And this is exactly the significance of this lens. This heavy, I must say, perspex represents the lens of the telescope that Galileo used to use to watch the stars and its magnifying capacity was three times. So this is why we've got 4692 limited edition of pans, which is 1564 by times the date of birth of Galileo. And this is the lens reproduction. Here is the pen, as you may see, very intricate design. The cracked eyes or wild celluloid on a faceted pen. And this aspect of faceted pen will be mentioned later in the video. The pen in the Maltese sunlight. Another interesting historical fact linked to the production of this pen is that in 1992, that is a year before its release, finally. Galileo was declared innocent by the Inquisition of heresy for his support of Copernicus's radical ideas regarding the solar system and the fact that he said the Earth was round and not flat. So, four, six, so years later, never too late. So, if we go to a small historic background related to this Omar's Galileo Galileo of 1993 pen, which we are reviewing. As Letizia Copini describes in her book about Italian fountain pens, between 1925 and 1932, Omar's based production around the lines of fountain pens in the Dufour style, both flat tops and streamlined, which they marked as Omar's extra and made use of hard rubber as well as colored celluloid. The celluloid pens, which were both large and medium size, were produced in cl classic shades of jade green, lapis, blue, black, as well as marbled variants with color combinations only found on Omar's pens. So, contrary to what some think, the white celluloid was not introduced by Omar's in the Galileo Galilei of 1993, but as you see also on this 1930 vintage fountain pen, also by Omar's, it was introduced earlier. Then, in 1999, Omar's produced the Omar's Urban 8 fountain pen dedicated to Pope Urban VIII, the Pope who had condemned Galileo Galilei for saying that the world is round, like Copernicus, whilst the Pope taught or believed that the world is flat. Ironically, this pen of 1999 in wild celluloid was round, like the Bologna style Omas, whilst the Galileo Galilei pen was faster and flat. Then, in 2015, Omas produced the Omas Year of Light Galileo Paragon, which was a celebration of Omas' 90th anniversary and its earlier celluloid pen designs. Here, the difference between the 1993 pen is the reversal of the rings, bands, and clip colors between silver and gold schemes, where they interchanged the 1993 with these 2015 color scheme tones. The pen is quite light in weight. It compares to the old style Paragon, but is not a celluloid variant on the Paragon style. Later we'll see the comparison also with the Paragon Omas. You've got the 12 facets of the pen. Gold and white gold pens and Greek feature a very sturdy I must say clip you've got the pointed top of the finial of the cap and here is the pen as you may see there is written the Galileo Omas Galileo Galilei and you also have the number of the limited edition of the pen, which is, see if you can get this, 
is over here it's 106 now interesting enough and that's the detail of these amas pins that the same number is reproduced 106 on the lens it's engraved here on the lens this is a piston filler as you may see it has no ink yet so I'll link it later and the nib is an 18 karat gold dual tone nib by mass in this case as you may see it's a medium nib a quick size comparison I chose to use the well-known pens the Homo sapiens Visconti the Mont Blanc 149, the Paragon, the Omas Paragon, the Amando Simone Club, Ojiba Extra, and the Lamy 2000. Now, as you know, the Mont Blanc is a well sized pen, which is slightly bigger than the Paragon, but different to what might be thought. They are not the same size. The Paragon and the Galileo are not the same size. As you see, the Paragon is slightly smaller than the Paragon in length. Now, the Ajiva was chosen because this is practically the size of the Bologna, on the Club Bologna Extra. So this would be then on the bigger side of pens. For me, it is on the limit of the ideal pen size for my style of writing. Perfect weight. Now we see how it writes. So. Here we've got the Mars Galileo Galilei of nineteen ninety three in wild celluloid. This has an 18 carat nib, which is medium. Dual tone. Piston filler. Ink. It's very nice and flowing. This nib is something the tine separates slightly from the feed. Look, is, can you see this? Hero Shizuku and like has a small bouncy effect. Take Isumi. I will not press obviously, but it does have slight line variation. I don't think it's meant to flex. Okay, fly. Now as regards witness. This is Rodia paper. This is quite dry. And Having a Nishizuku ink, it's quite a surprise, but this was a very nice flowing writing sample. 